Are you as confused by Houdini packages as I am? Let's see if we can figure them out together. Hi, my name is Kays and welcome to another Right Brain tutorial. Now, to be perfectly honest with you, I've been dreading making this tutorial. Why? Because the subject matter is very technical, it's not at all right brained, and eh, I don't know, it's complicated, I'm not sure I fully understand it myself. However, a lot of you have asked about Houdini packages and how to set them up, and I thought, all right, well, let me give it a shot. I'll do my best. I don't know everything. I don't know the whys of everything, but I'm going to try my best to explain to you how to set it up in such a way that you can use them. A while back, I made a tutorial on how to edit the Houdini.env file. If you watch that tutorial, you probably ended up with something like this, and uh, this is necessary in order to be able to load up third-party add-ons into Houdini or customize Houdini in other ways. Uh, so, you know, for instance, if you want to use Redshift or something like that, you had to kind of you know, dive into the Houdini.env file and change some parameters there so that when Houdini boots up, it, um, it knows that, hey, there's this packages that needs to load up and it's, you know, this add-ons. So ever since Houdini 17.5, SideFX sought to create an alternative way of dealing with third-party add-ons, which they called packages. Um, are packages better or worse than just editing the Houdini.env file? It's a little bit up to you. I mean, it kind of depends on your specific needs. Uh, for some users, it might be simpler, and for some users, it might be more complicated. Uh, both methods work. So, you know, you can use both, but I thought, well, let me, let me show you a little bit how to set up packages, and then you can kind of figure out if you want to use packages or if you want to stay with Houdini.env. So the first thing that we want to do to set up packages is go under our directory that contains the Houdini.env file. Uh, for Mac users, this would be in the user, library, uh, preferences, Houdini, and 18.0 if you're on Houdini 18 folder. For Windows users, I believe it's on your C drive. It's going to be under users, documents, uh, Houdini. Also, I think it's Houdini uh, or 18.0 folder. Anyway, wherever your Houdini.env file, this is where you want to be. So the first thing that we want to do to use packages is we're going to need to create a brand new folder in this directory, which we're going to call, you guessed it, packages. Uh, make sure it's all lowercase, make sure it has the S at the end. And uh, the reason why is because when we load up Houdini from this point forward, Houdini is going to look in this directory for a folder called packages. And it's going to look inside that folder for a set of files that are uh, formatted um, in this, uh, you know, with a suffix called JSON. JSON, I believe, is a scripting language that's a variant or a derivative of JavaScript, if I'm not mistaken. Some of you can correct me on that. So this is, inside this packages folder is where we're going to put our JSON files. And JSON files are basically contain um, this information, slightly different, you know, slightly different kind of syntax, but it's going to be basically the same information that up until now was contained in our Houdini.env file. So how do we create a JSON file and how do we set it up? Uh, the simplest method that I can think of, honestly, is to use a pre-existing JSON file and simply customize it to your specific needs. Um, there is this really, really great set of third-party add-ons called MOPS, Motion Operators, that uh, were created um, a while back. I'm going to be talking about this uh, in an upcoming tutorial in more details because I think more people should know about them. But uh, one of the cool things is when you install MOPS, it actually comes with an example JSON file. So we're just going to use this as a template so that we can kind of customize and build additional JSON files based on this. So I'm just simply going to uh, option drag and copy this inside our packages folder. So now we have a mops.json file inside our packages folder. However, we're not done. It's not that easy. We're going to need to customize this JSON file. So we're going to want to open it with a text editor. I like to use BB Edit. Some of you might like to use you know, other different types of text editors. Anything will do. I mean, at its core, a JSON file is simply a text file. But we need to change. Um, where this, uh, you know, the, the information that's contained inside this JSON file. The basic uh, layout of a JSON file without getting like overly technical involves uh, a set of uh, curly brackets to kind of define, you know, the, this is where it starts and this is where it ends. 
Then it's followed by this uh, env, in quotes, this variable called env, which uh, it's simply telling Houdini, hey, whatever you see past this point, pretend that it was in our houdini.env file. Then uh, there's a square bracket, uh, followed by another set of uh, curly brackets, and then we have another variable that in this particular case is called mops, followed by a colon, followed by another uh, directory, that's once again in quotes, and then um, we're going to uh, close this argument with a closing curly brackets. There's a comma here. I don't know if it's really necessary. The comma basically means, hey, we're not done yet. Uh, but in this particular case, we actually are done. But anyway, I'm just going to leave it in there. Um, and then uh, we're going to close our square brackets. There's another comma. And then finally, there's a final variable called path. This is really like the most important. Uh, of these variables and then uh, it's going to basically tell Houdini, hey, this path variable, I want you to recognize it as being this mops and uh, so that the second part of that argument is a dollar sign that points to this mops variable right here. It's complicated, I know, I'm sorry, I apologize, but this is the best way that I can understand it. So. Um, the main thing that we want to change in this particular JSON file is that right now it's pointing to the wrong directory. It's not pointing to my directory, it's pointing to uh, Henry Foster's um, uh, directory on his computer. Um, but in this particular case, my computer has a slightly different directory. It's a Mac, it's also not a PC. So let's change that. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to find the right directory where my mops folder, my main folder that contains all the mops related files lives. And the easiest way to find uh, what this translates into, you know, a language that, uh, that the JSON file can understand is simply to open up Terminal and drag this folder right in here. And it's going to give me the directory, so I'm just going to copy this. And I'm going to go back into BB Edit, and I'm just going to highlight everything in between the quotes. And I'm going to paste it. And that's it. So now, this particular JSON file, I'm just going to hit Save. And this particular JSON file is now going to point to the right directory where my MOPS uh, data files are contained. And when I boot up Houdini, then Houdini is going to, um, once again, look for a uh, packages folder where, you know, in the same directory as the Houdini.emv file lives, it's going to find one. It's going to be like, oh, cool, cool, let's see what's in here. And it's going to find this JSON file with MOPS, and it's going to have... Um, you know, all the information that it needs to be able to load MOPS as a third-party add-on. So, um, you know, that's kind of like at the, at the heart of it, the simplest way that I can kind of explain how to set up like a, uh, you know, Houdini packages. But in some cases, it can be a little bit more complicated because sometimes we don't have a simple, just a single directory. Sometimes we have multiple directories. So, for instance, if we go back on our original houdini.emv file when it comes to redshift you'll see that redshift actually has two different directories that it's pointing to one it's under this path and the other one is under the houdini uh, underscore path variable right so these are like two different directories how can we set up two different locations in our json file so that houdini will correctly recognize it and know exactly where to go look for this files that it really needs to be able to run Redshift. So it's it's honestly not much more complicated than what we just did with MOPS. We just need to add another variable in there. So what I'm going to do is I'm just going to go here. I'm going to option click so I can kind of duplicate this MOPS. I'm going to rename the new MOPS. I'm going to call it Redshift. Okay. And let's open this up in BB Edit and let's start editing it. So uh, the first thing I'm going to do is uh, we don't really need this uh, path because what we're going to do is uh, we're just going to point directly to it. We're going to get to the point with uh, Houdini as far as Houdini is concerned. So I'm just going to delete this. We don't, we don't need it. Um, so the first thing that I want to do is I want to replace this with our first path variable here. So I'm just going to copy this redshift path variable. I'm just going to say path uh, equal, you know, then it points to that directory. I'm just going to go into my Redshift uh, JSON file. I'm just going to highlight this entire MOPS line here that we don't need because this is for Redshift. I'm just going to paste it. So when I paste it, you'll see that everything is turned red. Why is that? Well, BB Edit and other text editors to deal with codes kind of have like a bit of a kind of error check and basically what BB Edit is telling me is like, hey man, <laughs> whatever you're doing here, this is not the correct format for 
you know, for the type of, um, you know, this is not the correct syntax for whatever the format that you're trying to use. So there are a couple problems here that we need to fix for this to work. So the first thing is if we reference back to the JSON, uh, the MOPS JSON file that we just changed, you'll see that the variables need to be in quotes. And in this particular case, coming from the Houdini.emv file, there is no, the, the variable is not in quotes. So we need to change that. So we're going to put this path in quotes. Quote here, quote there. Okay, so that fixes part of it, but not everything. There's other errors that we need to address. So the other thing that you'll see is that we have an equal sign right here. And under the MOPS example file, we actually have this colon. So we don't use equal in the JSON file format, but we use a colon. So the moment I do that, ooh, cool, the red goes away and we're kind of back into like the somewhat correct, uh, you know, syntax that we need to be for, uh, for this particular JSON um, script. There's another change that I need to make, which is to get rid of this dollar path and the colon. Because uh, quite simply, uh, Houdini doesn't need it. It just um, uh, well, this is this is the path. So you know, we would be literally pointing back at it, and we don't really need it. Um, and Houdini is just kind of saying, "Hey, man, I don't need any of this other stuff. I just need to know where to go find these files. I just need the directory." So we just kind of like delete this portion of it. So all we're doing is just saying this variable path equals to this particular directory. Go look in there. Okay, part one is done of Redshift, but we have a second set, this Houdini underscore path variable that we also need to account for. So how are we gonna deal with this? It's really quite simple. We're just gonna create uh, some new curly brackets, and, uh, or you know, we could have copied this and just replaced this, this particular text in here. Um, and I'm just going to go in here. I'm just going to, once again, copy this. I'm going to paste it in between the curly brackets right here. And it's going to go red, of course, because... Uh, here, let me format it the way it wants it. Because the first variable, Houdini underscore path, is not in quotes. So I'm going to change that, put that in quotes. And then I'm going to replace the equal symbol with a colon. And that's going to make the red go away and basically BB Edit is telling me, all right, it should be okay now. And once again, I'm going to make a third change, which is to get rid of this semicolon and the ampersand uh, because Houdini doesn't need it. Once again, Houdini just needs, it's like just the facts, ma'am. That's all. So it just wants to know that, hey, there's this path variable and this is the directory that it matches and then there's this Houdini underscore path variable and this is the directory that it goes to and that's it. That's all it needs to know. So if we save this, now when we launch Houdini, we should be able to successfully, you know, um, launch Redshift within it. In order to make your life a little bit simpler, I'm going to basically copy and paste this into the description of the video so at least you'll be able to kind of copy and paste it yourself and then of course just change the directories to whatever corresponds to your version of Redshift and you should be good to go. I thought I would touch on a third example on the JSON um, files if you know if you want to do something that's a little more customized because I use Houdini on a Mac and for some of you who use Houdini on a laptop uh, you don't have a middle uh, mouse button and um, you know, and I made another tutorial that teaches you that you know by putting this variable here, Houdini underscore MMB underscore pan equals zero. Uh, basically, what you're telling is like that you don't have a middle mouse button, and now if you hold down Option or Alt on your keyboard and right click, you can move the camera around as if you had a middle mouse button. So, how do we create a JSON uh, file that basically? tells Houdini this particular command. Okay, let's let's do it. So I'm just gonna, um, once again, option click so I can make a copy of the original mops. I'm just gonna call this one case because it's kind of like part of my specific customization of Houdini. I'm just gonna, once again, right click and open it with BB edit. So right off the bat, we don't really need this path variable because we're not dealing with a uh, path in this particular case, we're dealing simply with telling Houdini a specific command to do, you know, to, to read whenever it's uh, booting up. So uh, once again, like I mean, the the formatting is pretty pretty simple. Uh, what we're gonna do is we're gonna replace this first argument with this 
um, Houdini underscore MMB underscore pan right here. So I'm just gonna copy that, paste it right here. And then uh, instead of a directory, obviously, like, you know, this is not pointing to a directory, but like in our original EMV file, it just said equals zero. So all we have to do is just replace with a directory with simply um, zero. And Houdini will understand this. Houdini will understand it and will say, oh, okay, okay, cool. You know, I, I get it. So that's basically it. I mean, that's packages a little bit in a simplified nutshell as much as possible as I could do it. So basically, you know, create a packages folder, uh, put your JSON files in there and customize your JSON files so that they're pointing to the right directories or in this last example, so that it's, you know, having like the right kind of set of customized tweak commands that you want in when Houdini boots up. And that should be it. Uh, I mean, I hope this was helpful for some of you. Um, thankfully, a lot of the third-party add-ons that I'm seeing coming out for Houdini have a built-in JSON file as an example that you can then kind of easily customize. So you really shouldn't need to create a JSON file from scratch. Uh, as I said, Mops has it, uh, the new Side Effects Labs also has it. Um, I mean, those are all incredibly useful. Um, I'm going to put a link in the description of this video also to um, Henry Foster, who is uh, one of the co-creators of Mops. He uh, made this really, really cool page that explains packages into more details, the syntax, why certain things need to be done a certain way and what they mean. Um, it's an interesting reading if you're like, you know, technically minded, but as I said, like, I mean, if you're not, just uh, uh, copy the, you know, the example files, change the directories to whatever the directories on your hard drives are, and that should be it. And then, um, you know, you'll have, uh, you'll be using packages. Oh, there's one last thing that's really, really important, okay? This is critical. If you switch to using packages and all of a sudden you're pointing to packages, to all these different directories in packages, make sure that you delete all of this information from your ENV file, okay? So Houdini doesn't get confused because otherwise you're just literally saying, hey, do this and also do this, which is gonna confuse Houdini. So basically, if you start using packages like I am, um, you know, like my uh, Houdini.emv file is basically, you know, whatever the original virgin file is. I mean, it doesn't have anything whatsoever. So I hope you found this helpful. And uh, if you have any questions or comments, please leave them in the comment section below. Um, you know, hopefully this will make uh, your life a little bit simpler. But if not, as I said, there's nothing wrong with sticking around and continuing to use the Houdini.env methods. Until next time, anyways case, see you soon.